So next we have Dr. Dobertian from uh, University of Florida in Jacksonville. He's going to talk about laparoscopic subtotal colectomy with transrectal extraction of the whole colon and iliorectal anastomosis. Thank you. Um, we'd like to thank SAGES and the uh, panel for allowing us the privilege of presenting our video today. We have no dis nothing to disclose, and you can go ahead and run the uh, video with audio. Laparoscopic subtotal colectomy and natural orifice extraction of the colon through a transanal route with totally intercorporeal intercide circular anastomosis with triple stapling technique. From the Minimally Invasive Surgery Division, the Department of Surgery at the University of Florida in Jacksonville. Laparoscopic colon surgery offers many distinct advantages over open surgery, including less pain and narcotic use, earlier ambulation and bowel function, less wound complications, and better cosmesis. Traditionally, laparoscopic colon surgery has required an abdominal incision for specimen extraction and to create an extracorporeal anastomosis. Natural orifice specimen extraction, or NOSE, either transanally or transvaginally, offers alternatives which decrease abdominal wall morbidity, including wound infection and hernia. Our video is that of a 27-year-old female with multiple sclerosis and Sitzmark-proven colonic in inertia. She also had symptomatic biliary dyskinesia. We performed a laparoscopic subtotal colectomy with intracorporeal ileal rectal anastomosis, cholecystectomy, and natural orifice specimen extraction through the transanal route. Our port placement is shown here. We placed four 5-millimeter ports and one 12-millimeter port in the right lower quadrant. Here we are isolating the iliocolonic vessels. We lift the right colon and separate the retroperitoneal attachments to the mesocolon in a standard medial to lateral approach. Next, we separate the lateral attachments of the right colon and hepatic flexure. Our team transects the ileum, preserving as much ileum as possible with a 4.5 centimeter stapler and 3.5 millimeter staples. An additional firing of a six centimeter, two millimeter stapler was necessary to complete the mesenteric transection. Next, we mobilize the transverse colon, transecting the mesocolon close to the colon and transecting the gastrocolic ligament, trying to preserve as much omentum as possible. We then mobilize the splenic flexure, the descending colon, and sigmoid colon along its lateral peritoneal attachments. The intraperitoneal high rectum at the level of the sacral promontory is then transected using a 4.5 centimeter, 3.5 millimeter stapling device. And the mesocolon is then transected retrograde to meet the resection margin. The cholecystectomy is then performed and the gallbladder is placed in an endo pouch for later natural orifice specimen extraction. Next, the rectum is opened. A rigid sigmoidoscope is inserted in preparation for specimen extraction transanally. The gallbladder is removed first, and an endoloop is placed on both ends of the colon for antegrade extraction and later for intracorporealization of the anvil.
the rectum is transected with a GIA 4.5 centimeter, 3.5 millimeter stapling device, and the ileum is opened and the anvil is placed on the anti-mesenteric border of the ileum in preparation for the end to side circular ileorectostomy using an EEA 25 stapler. The uterus is tacked to the abdominal wall with a Keith needle, but could be done with a uterine manipulator just as easily. The circular stapler and anvil are then docked and the anastomosis is created. A rigid proctoscope is then inserted transanally and a water test is performed as well as direct visualization of the anastomosis showing no leaks in an intact anastomosis. Our patient's postoperative course was uncomplicated. She was discharged home on hospital day four, tolerating a regular diet and having four bowel movements per day. In conclusion, natural orifice specimen extraction for laparoscopic colectomies provides distinct advantages to transabdominal extraction routes and should be part of the armamentarium of minimally invasive surgeons. Potential limitations include cecal size, history of pelvic surgery, and the surgeon's ability to perform an intracorporeal anastomosis. One potential complication of this procedure may be an increased incidence of intra-abdominal abscess formation. Further study of this potential complication, in our opinion, is indicated. Thank you very much. That was a very interesting video. I just have a couple of questions, and certainly if anyone from the floor has questions, please ask some. Um, you mentioned at the end there are patients that you wouldn't necessarily do this sort of extraction in. Can you elaborate a little bit on the patient selection? It's, it's basically, uh, so I, currently we're just using doing benign work, uh, but certainly uh, T1 or T2 malignancies have, have been attempted and done well. So we have a pro in the audience today. So. <laughs> Uh, uh, I, I'm H. Chopra from New York. Uh, my question is, uh, did you uh, close the mesenteric defect behind the uh, ileum? Because uh, we have seen uh, internal hernias from there and bowel obstruction postoperatively. We did not close the, uh, the mesenteric defect, no, sir. Well, I thought this was a fantastic video. I like the technique a lot. Why? Are you hypothesizing that you're going to have increased intra-abdominal abscesses after this procedure? Well, certainly any time you're doing a colotomy and uh, potentially contaminating the, uh, the, the pelvis, uh, that would be a concern of ours. But uh, yesterday they had a very nice talk out of Strasbourg that uh, seemed to uh, uh, alleviate some of that concern. So I still don't understand why you're going to see an increased risk of abscess formation after this procedure as opposed to a laparoscopically assisted or open colon resection? Well, if you weren't potentially doing a, a, open, a colotomy at that time, in other words, you were just stapling across and bringing the specimen out through either a Sills port or um, a fan and steel incision, potentially that would... So potentially a little bit more contamination. Yes, sir. I see someone here at the front microphone. Uh, congratulations for a wonderful video. Here, in the concern of abscess, I think uh, either I'm taped or a clamp across the bowl and the irrigation of the distal wash out, I think you are concerned of abscess, uh, no, we don't find out like that. Second is, uh, this is a lady, and if you are concerned about in, in incontinence following extraction such a large specimen, why don't you use the vagina if a lady accepts for extraction? After all, it's also natural orifice. Well, we thought about using the vagina, and we actually, our series, we have more transvaginal extractions and transanal extractions, but uh, 
we just uh, chose the uh, transanal route here. Okay, thank you very much.